Science to Look Forward to in 2015, by Zyka Ristolny. The LIGO gravitational wave detector is undergoing an upgrade, and it will come back online later this year, with a good chance of conclusively observing gravity waves. In the process, it could provide astronomers with a new tool, one which might allow them to get a closer look at the Big Bang itself. It's a new year, but it's not just any new year. 2015 is shaping up to be a huge year for scientific exploration and discovery plus science policy. There are some important decisions that will be made this year on climate change, three-parent in vitro fertilization, and more. Those momentous decisions will hopefully be matched by discoveries that are no less historic. Both the LHC and LIGO will be reopening, possibly opening up new horizons for physics and astronomy, while NASA will be visiting dwarf planets and preparing another trip to Mars. Beyond these big projects, another sophisticated labs will open, progress will be made in understanding our evolutionary history, and new medical advances promise to improve lives. With so much going on, we thought it would be a good time to outline some of the developments we can look forward to in 2015. Much of this information comes from two new pieces in the journal Nature, but we've expanded on them with our own sources. Progress on the medical front, in 2015, Sally Davies, UK's chief medical officer, will push for an agreement to deal with antimicrobial resistance through the World Health Organization. She notes in a Nature piece that, as the effectiveness of antibiotics goes down over time, lack of preparedness is causing significant damage. But with strong diplomatic effort and the support of the UK government, Davies hopes to reach a global agreement on practices that will limit the problem and promote new treatments. By the end of 2015, I want to see global action, she writes. Drug companies have been competing to bring drugs to the market that lower cholesterol, and two of them look like they might be approved this year. The drugs have already been shown in clinical trials to reduce low-density lipoprotein, LDL, cholesterol, and both have been assured of a speedy review. The decisions are expected to arrive in the summer. Progress on combating Ebola will continue to be made in 2015. Trials of vaccines are already in progress, with results expected in June. There are several drugs being tested, as well as treatments using blood from Ebola survivors which is rich in antibodies that neutralize the virus. If proved effective, the blood treatments could be rolled out quickly and effectively. In the meantime, healthcare workers in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone will have to continue and expand the use of proven measures, such as rapid detection and isolation of people who are infected, in order to bring the Ebola epidemic to an end. The LHC reboots, further reading, Renovations will allow LHC to reach its full design energy, improve detectors. The Large Hadron Collider will restart in March after two years of inactivity. Incredible as the massive particle collider already was, the last two years, and 97 million slash 145.9 million dollars have been spent to upgrade it. Before its refit, the LHC discovered the Higgs boson which plays a role in imparting mass to other particles. The Higgs was the last particle predicted by the standard model that hadn't been discovered, meaning we've completed the model's set of particle predictions. Now that the model is a complete success, what's the next thing to do? Tear it down. Okay, maybe the next mission isn't quite that dramatic, but researchers will now attempt to find particle behaviors that the standard model doesn't cover. The upgraded LHC will produce collisions at 13 trillion electron volts, nearly double its previous high. With such high energies, it's possible that we can find some unpredicted particles or discover what's behind dark matter. When we turn on again with these new higher energies we should have the capability to start producing new particles and look for new processes, if they're there, Dave Charlton, spokesperson of the Atlas Project, told the BBC radio show today. One model that stands to be affected by the LHC's next round of experiments is supersymmetry which, despite its appeal among many physicists, has gotten no support from the last round of LHC experiments. Those experiments failed to find evidence for supersymmetry's predicted particles, as the model predicts a number of particles which are counterparts to the particles in the standard model, but with different spin values. 
If no evidence is found for supersymmetries predicted particles in the LHC's upcoming experiments, it could be the last nail in the coffin for some of the most popular versions of the model. New labs, a number of new science laboratories will open in 2015. The Francis Crick Institute, a multidisciplinary medical research institute, will open in London in November. With 1,250 researchers, it will help us understand why disease develops and find new ways to treat, diagnose, and prevent illnesses such as cancer, heart disease, infections, and neurodegenerative diseases, according to the Institute's website. Further north, the National Graphene Institute will open this spring at the University of Manchester. The Institute, as its name implies, will work with graphene, a carbon material that is astoundingly strong, about 100 times stronger than steel, despite being a single atom thick. By comparison, a sheet of paper is about a million atoms thick. Graphene could be used to build all sorts of things, from lightweight components for aircraft to flexible touch screens. The new institute hopes to be a stepping stone to eventually creating a graphene city. Meanwhile in the United States, the Allen Institute for Cell Science will open its doors in Seattle, Washington. Funded by Microsoft billionaire Paul Allen, the site will host scientists interested in delving into the world of the human cell. Climate change deal, amidst all the breakthroughs, landmarks, and discoveries we can look forward to in 2015, a darker milestone is inevitable, carbon dioxide, the primary greenhouse gas whose presence traps heat in the atmosphere should reach 400 parts per million this year. It's the first time carbon dioxide will reach that level in millions of years. Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom on the climate change front. In 2014, the United States and China, the planet's biggest producers of carbon dioxide, signed a historic agreement to reduce their emissions. And this December at the United Nations talks in Paris, it's hoped that these and other nations will sign the legally binding post-2020 agreement. Never before has there been such public support to act and political will to take action, wrote Christiana Figures, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, in a piece appearing in the journal Nature. Whatever decision is made in December, it will be historic, and will be feeling the effects for quite some time. What happens in the run-up to Paris will do more to determine the quality of life for generations to come than anything we 